Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to remind you, we still have Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t-shirts available. You can check them out over at t-shirt.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby. And uh, the title of today's episode is The Mystery of the Burning Light. is my hobby. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barton Drake speaking. For today's drama, I've selected case history number 63 from my book, Mystery is My Hobby. I call it The Mystery of the Burning Light. Kirk Orson, a friend of mine, had invited me on a cruise in his yacht. Among the passengers were a group of show people and their agents. We set sail in the early evening, and about nine o'clock, something went wrong with the electric wiring system. So, without lights, we headed for a small cove where we planned to anchor until morning. <laughs> Bart, come in. Hello, Kirk. Everything all right? Oh, I think so. According to my reckoning, we should be entering the cove right now. You're quite a navigator. <laughs> in this fog, I'd be lost in no time. The answer to that is a good compass, a chart, and being able to recognize the sound of certain bell buoys and foghorns. <laughs> I've been here a good many times before. It's a pity the lights had to go out. Rather ruined your plan for the weekend, didn't it? Oh, I suppose so. Still, I'm not too unhappy about it. Oh? I'm just as well pleased we're not going out. This gang we have aboard aren't as congenial as they might be. <laughs> I guess I invited the wrong combination of people. Yes, I've noticed a certain restraint among them. Restraint? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All I've heard since we started is a series of violent outbursts of anger. What's the answer, sir? Oh, it's this ditzy Randolph business. Gavin Trist, who handles the advertising account for Mallory T., signed Dixie for the Pinky Michael show just yesterday. Well, is that bad? Oh, I guess so. It seems that Gav had promised a job to Ellen Niles. And then at the last minute, Luke Mallory, who owns the tea company, saw a movie at Dixie and wired Gavin to sign her on. That's tough on Ella, but if you're in show business, you have to expect that sort of thing. Well, the only trouble is that Ellen Niles is 100% better singer than Dixie, and everyone in the trade knows it. Oh, don't say. Then why did Gavin twist her? Oh, there are two answers to that. He wants to pacify Mallory. Uh-huh. The Mallory account means a $5 million billing for Trist's agency. Huh. You do anything not to lose it. I see. And what's the second reason? Gavin hasn't got guts enough to stand by his own convictions and tell Mallory that Dixie Randolph would ruin the Pinty Michael show. Oh. Well, I guess we're in far enough. I'll signal the uh, engine room and fill the engine. Crew will take care of the rest. Let's go out and back, huh? Right, sure. <sighs> oh. Ah, that night air smells good, doesn't it? Yes. Did a neat job of getting in here. I can see the outline of the shore through the fog. Well, there goes the ankle. Yeah, we're in close. There's about ten feet of water in low tide. We'll be safe here until morning. Tell me, Kirk, is there any sort of town nearby? Oh, there's a little place called Seaview about half a mile back. Why? Seaview, hmm? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought I might row ashore and root out an electrician to come back and look over your wiring system. Oh, there's no need. Thanks, just the same. The crew will attend to it as soon as it gets light. Mm-hmm. Kirk. Hmm? Is that the only reason you don't want me to go ashore? Hmm? Huh? What made you say that? I think you're more worried than you pretend. What happened this evening, Kirk, that you haven't told me about? Well, nothing. So help me. <laughs> Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Well, then, let me ask you another question. Aren't you rather an important stockholder in the Luke Mallory Tea Company? Yes, why? Everyone knows that. Bart, I can't understand your sudden... well, suspicious attitude. 
In fact, I... I think you can, Kirk. You know, I dislike being made a goat. However, what's that? It sounded like a door banging. It seems to have started you considerably, Kirk. Someone's coming. Kirk. Oh, Kirk. Uh, Where Ella. are you, Kirk? Ella, over here. Oh, Kirk. What's wrong? Heaven, you're here. Oh, Kirk, it's terrible. Well, what's terrible? Speak up, girl. Dixie. He's dead. What the devil? You... I went to his state room to borrow a cigarette. No one answered my knock, and I opened the door, and there she was, lying in her bed. A knife in her throat. Good Lord. She was murdered? Are you so surprised, Kirk? Ella, you'd better show me where Dixie's cabin is. Oh, no. I, I just can't go back there again. I can't. Sorry, Ella. You'll have to. Come along, Kirk. This is Dixie's cabin. Very well. You can go back to your own cabin now if you like, Ella. Kirk, come inside with me. All right. Oh, uh, the light switch is just to the right over here. Never mind that. The lights aren't working. I'll pack a match. Well, not a pleasant sight, is she? Yes, me. Bart, this is terrible. Yes, it is. That rather a small knife could have belonged to a woman. Light another match, will you, Kirk? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, shall I light the candle? No, never mind. Dixie's fully dressed. No signs of a struggle. Don't touch that book, Kirk, or anything else. Look, I was was only going to put it back on the table. She apparently was reading and dropped off to sleep. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the candle's burned more than halfway down. Bart, whoever murdered her must have blown the candle out. What are we going to do? Right now, we're going outside and close up the stateroom. Come along. But you're going to do something, aren't you? Not now. Not until Inspector Danton gets here. Inspector Danton... But look here, Bart. Yes, yes, I know, Kirk. Look, uh, you rather suspected that this murder was going to take place, didn't you? Of course not. Is that why you invited me on this cruise? You hoped I'd be able to solve the crime without having the police in, hmm? Don't you realize, Kirk, I haven't the authority to do a thing without a policeman or someone connected with the police department? Bart, so help me. You're, you're way off the beam. Yes? Naturally, I, I, I don't want a scandal if it can be helped. Naturally not. Tell me, Kirk, will your ship to shore radio work without electric current? Yes, it's a battery set. Well, that's good. Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to contact Inspector Danton. In the meantime, I think you'd better say nothing about this to anyone. The fewer people who know about it, the less trouble we'll have in apprehending the guilty party. What's the matter with this boat, anyhow? Don't they have any lights? Something happened to the electric wiring earlier this evening, Inspector. That's why we anchored in this cove until morning. Down this corridor, Inspector. Is that the reason they got lanterns hung all over the place? Yes, the guest police have candles for their use in the cabin. Bart. Oh, hello, Kirk. We're coming up to see you in a few minutes. This is Inspector Noah Danton. Hi. Oh, hello, Inspector. Bart, there's something funny about all this. Something funny about murder, Kirk? No, 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 I don't mean that. I've been down in the engine room checking over the electric wiring with the crew. Mm-hmm. There isn't anything basically wrong. But I have a feeling that someone's cut the wire somewhere. Well, possibly you're right. Daylight will probably reveal the damage. Well, right Bart, now, we've... There's another thing that worries me. Yes? Look, you know what will happen if this gets into the papers. Now, you're going to keep it out of the papers. You see, son, it's always the first thing we're asked. Can we keep this particular murder quiet? And the answer is No. Murders make a bigger noise than anything. So you better make up your mind to getting a little free publicity. Sorry, Kirk, but that's just the way it is. (sighs) I guess you're right. Well, just do as easy as you can, will you? Of course. Oh, uh, is there anything I can do? No, not just now. We'll want to talk to you later, of course. Yes, of course. Oh, uh, I'll be in my cabin. Right. (laughs) The same old stuff. The only way I know to keep murders quiet is not to murder anyone. Well, you can't blame them for trying, Inspector. Here we are. This is Dixie Randolph's cabin. Get out your flashlight, Inspector. But you said there were candles in here. Hey. They certainly did a job on her, didn't they? Yes, they certainly did. She apparently was uh, reading and... Say, 
I killed Inspector. What's the matter? Inspector, I'm afraid I've, I've messed things up for you. Messed things up? What are you talking about? The knife has gone. The murderer must have come back and removed it while I was helping you come aboard. Fine thing. I thought I'm you... sorry, Inspector. It's my fault completely. I remained on guard for over an hour. Then I heard you coming and I left my post. Yeah. I don't know about this, but you don't sound natural to me. Now, look. What have you been up to? Not a thing. I swear it, Inspector. Kirk Orson urged me to conduct an investigation at once, but I pointed out I had no authority to do so without you on hand. Uh-huh. And you're sure you're surprised because the lethal weapon is missing? Surprised? Yeah. Why didn't you lock this stateroom door and keep the key when you went out to help me on board? Well, Inspector, I hate to admit it, but I never thought of it. Oh, you never thought of that? No. But, look, if you're trying to pull a fast... Hey, Inspector. Okay, okay. Now, who are the suspects and who on board knows about this lady being nice? Well, let me see. It was Ellen Niles who discovered the body, so she knows. Cork Orson was with me when I investigated, so he knows. Yes, that's all. You're sure of that, eh? I'm never sure of anything, Inspector. All I have are ideas and theories. Well, now that you're here, I guess we can begin our investigation. I propose that we start at the first cabin, wake up its occupant, question him or her, and then go on to the next cabin, and so on and so forth, until we find our murderer. That's a good idea. There's only one hitch that I can see. And what's that? How are we going to know the murderer when we see him or her? Also, when are you going to give me the real lowdown on what you've been up to? Also, who do you suspect of committing this murder and why? Inspector, I'm afraid I've given you the wrong impression completely. Huh. I know absolutely nothing worth talking about. Come on, man. Let's get going. Bart Drake, Gavin. Who? Oh, oh, Bart. Come on in. The door's unlocked. Let's go in, Inspector. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Bart. I forgot about the lights. I'll light the candle. Blasted candle? Where is it? Use your flashlight, Inspector. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I'm not used to groping around for candlesticks. Oh, there it is. You accidentally knocked it over. Yeah, and bent the end around like a fish hook. Got another any place? Oh, I think we can use this one all right, Inspector. You know, I'll light it. There we are. Right, thanks. Uh, what's up, Bart? Uh, who's this with you? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Inspector Noah Dan. Inspector McGavin Triz. Hi. Inspector? Do you mean a police inspector? Say, what's happened anyway? Before I answer that, Gavin, I'd like you to answer a question of mine. Sure. What is it? What's going on? Tell me exactly what you've been doing since 11 o'clock tonight. Are you kidding? No. At 11.15, I crawled into this bunk drunk as a lord. The next I knew, you were knocking at my door. Yikes, was I drunk. So help me, Bart, I'm going on the wagon for keeps. Well, it's not a bad idea. But being drunk tonight has probably saved you a lot of embarrassment. Dixie Randolph has been murdered. She's what? Ellen Niles found her in her cabin about an hour and a half ago with a knife in her throat. Good heavens. Does Kirk know? Yes, he was with me when Ella told us what she'd found. I asked him not to disturb anyone else until the inspector here came. Well, what do you know? Somebody got Dixie, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'll be done. Something <laughs> funny, Mr. Tripp? I'm sorry, Inspector. You know, I couldn't help but think of what a hole this gets me out of. How do you figure that? Why, old man Mallory had told me to sign up Dixie for the Pinky Michael show, which I did. Well? Well, Dixie's not good enough for the Michael show. Mallory would discover it after she'd been on once or twice. He'd blame me for hiring her. Not a good idea to argue with the old man. He might even be so sore he'd fire you, eh? Yes, right, he might. Why? Nothing. I was just thinking that gives you a good motive for murder, that's all. Why, you... Don't get excited, Gavin. The inspector doesn't overlook any bets. That's why he's considered top man in the Sure, but if he's accusing he's me of... not accusing you of anything. Now, calm down. I want to ask you one more thing. Yeah? What's that? What were you and Kirk and Ella quarreling about earlier this evening? Huh? Quarreling? Uh, what do you mean? I think you know exactly what I mean. You'd be wise to tell me what you can... We'll find out anyway, the hard way. Okay. It was about this Mallory business. Mm -hmm. I was alone in my cabin when Ella... Well, Gavin, what are you doing? 
time we had a long talk. Oh, hi, Ella. Come on in. All right. Now, tell me, what you're all steamed up about? Oh, don't stall, Gab. You know what I'm steamed up about. Why'd you do it? Do it? Do what? Oh, quit acting, Gab. You're not fooling anyone. Dixie just told me you signed her for the Michael show. Well, you fool. You're cutting off your nose to spite your face. Why, Dixie won't last on that show two weeks. She'll make you and Luke Mallory the laughing stock of the trade. Why, she All right, Ella. That's enough. Oh, is it? Well, I'm glad you came in, Kirk. I've got something to say, and no one's going to stop me from saying it. I've just learned that I'm the victim of the dirtiest double cross. No one's I... double crossed you, Ella. I happen to know that Dad's telling you the truth. Mallory was... And I happen to know that you're in love with Dixie Randolph, Kirk Orson. I happen to know also that she thinks you stink. You're handing her this Pinky Michaels job as a... Shut up. Jo- I won't shut up. I'm going to have my say. I've strung along with you bums for over a year, being satisfied with two-bit spots on second-rate shows. Then the Pinky Michaels job comes along No one and promised you anything, Ella. You were lucky that you got those two-bit spots, as you call them. Now, wait a minute, Kirk. There's no need for us to begin insulting each other. Ella, be sensible. You know as well as I that Dixie won't last with Pinky. Plenty of time... What do you mean, she won't last? She'll last or I'll pull my stock out of Mallory's lousy company and he knows it. See? I told you it was a sock. It's a dirty conspiracy to crowd me out. Call it anything you want to, Ella. But Dixie gets the job and she keeps it. So you might as well forget the whole thing. Oh, might I? Well, we'll see about that, Kirk Orson. I'm not forgetting anything. No one's pushing me around. I know enough Shut to push... Shut up, I won't. Shut up. Open your trap once more, and I'll knock those pearly teeth of yours down your throat. Take it easy, Kirk. You don't have to slap the poor kid around. No? Then what are you going to do about it, big shot? Want to make something of it? All I said was there's no need to slap her around. You don't have to get tough. I thought so. Not going to run the risk of losing the Mallory account, are you, Jazz? Then you better keep your mouth shut, too. The trouble with you two is you don't know when you're well off. A little success goes to your head. Take my advice. Kirk, uh, stay there and hold us off for about five minutes. He doesn't often get riled up, but this time he really blew his top. And you two just stood there and took it, eh? Sure we did. Kirk's got an in with Mallory because of the stock he owns. And when he really gets tough, nobody argues, unless he's a fool. And what was the ultimate result of all this, girl? Oh, nothing exciting. Ella burst into tears and ran out of the place. Kirk and I sat around having a few drinks and cooling off until the ship's lights went out. Then he left to see what was wrong. This, uh, light going out deal is something I don't understand. On a yacht this size, there should be someone who can fix them. There is, Inspector, but Kirk and I thought it best to wait until daylight before repairing the damage. Oh, you and Kirk... Thanks for your cooperation, but... Gav. Inspector, shall we visit the occupants of the next cabin? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kirk, Ella. Open up. What do you want? Just to talk to you a minute, darling. Drake and Inspector Danton are questioning everyone on board about Dixie's murder. Well? They'll be here in a few minutes. What are you going to tell them? What do you mean? I've already told Bart all I know. Have you? Bart's pretty sharp, Ella. Sooner or later, he's going to ask you, how come you could see Dixie? When you went in to borrow the cigarettes. What in the world are you talking about? The lights were out, darling. It was pitch dark. Yet you came running up to us and said you'd found Bitsy lying in her bed with a knife in her throat. Oh, you fool. What are you trying to do? Make me out a murderess now? You've done everything else to ruin me. I'm only asking. It was pitch dark and... So it was pitch dark. So I did the most natural thing in the world. I struck a match. Sure you did. You struck a match. Very natural. What happened to the burn match, honey? Oh, for goodness sake. I threw it away. Did you think I swallowed it? Oh, so you threw it away. Where? Kirk, in heaven's name, what are you trying to prove? Nothing, beautiful, nothing. I'm just saying that Drake will go looking for that match and he won't find it. Why? Because you didn't strike a match. Because you knew that Dixie was lying on the bed with a knife in her throat. Because you didn't need a light. You think that I... I'm only thinking this. 
I was with you and Bart when you told us about Dixie. I went down to the cabin with you. And it was I who saw the match on the floor of the cabin and picked it up. Well, then, what are you talking about? What's all this? Look, Ella, let's talk plain, huh? Dixie's gone. Not only is he going to be sore as a pup, but he's still going to want a singer for the Michael Show. Now, you're next on his list. Oh, and... so that's it. Oh, you're afraid of Mallory, too. All your big talk was just a lot of pretense. Oh, and now you're afraid that now I won't take the job. Oh, and you're trying to bribe me with a burnt match. Keep quiet, you <laughs> fool. And you think that I'm a murderess, but you're willing to let me sing on your radio show because Mallory will be sore. Keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, hello, Bart. Ella was having a little touch of hysterics, and well, I come in to comfort her. Oh, that's a pity. I imagine the shock of finding her friend's body must have been quite a blow. Which is nothing to the shock someone's going to get in about five minutes. What was that, Inspector? Have you discovered something? Plenty. Inspector, would you mind stepping over to Gavin Trist's cabin and asking him to come here? I imagine he'd like to be in at the payoff. You bet. Hold the phone till I get back. Bart. Hmm? Was the inspector kidding? Have you really discovered something? The inspector, Kirk, never kids. Are you feeling better, Ella? Yes, I'm all right. That's right. What is it that you and Inspector Danton have discovered? In just a moment, I'll be able to... Here we are, inside the trip. Find a seat, make yourself comfortable. Well, well, quite a gathering. Bart, you should be in radio. You have a sense of the dramatic. I am in radio, Gav. I do a show called Mystery is My Hobby. And a very good show it is. I'm in it. Okay, Bart... Let's show them how we pay these things off over the air. Very well, Inspector. First of all, I want to tell you, Kirk, that we found it necessary to question only five of your guests before we found our man. I suppose that means that one of us is the guilty party. That's right, Gav. It does. And I'm sorry, all three of you are my friends. So was Dixie, wasn't she, Bart? Come on. Get it over with. I'm anxious to see if my guess is correct. Are you referring to the match that you picked up in Dixie's cabin when we went to investigate? Well, yes. How'd you know that? I saw you pick it up. So that clears up that point, doesn't it? Now, Inspector, would you like to explain about the knife? Not much to explain. The ghillie party came back and swiped it. We figure he must have tossed it over the side, which is fine with us. We're in shallow water here. Tomorrow a diver can find it easy. Oh, well, then there'll be no doubt. The fingerprints... I'm afraid, Ella, that the fingerprints will be obliterated. However, fingerprints won't be necessary in this case. Now, that clears up mystery number two. Mystery number three is the fact that the lights went out at a most opportune time. Now, don't tell us that had something to do with the murder. It had a great deal to do with solving the murder, Gavin. If we hadn't been forced to put in at this coal, we wouldn't have been able to get hold of Inspector Danton. And that was important. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, go ahead, Bart. Thank you, Inspector. Bart, hmm? it was you who fouled up those lights. Right you are, Kirk. I hate to have to admit it, but I eavesdropped on the conversation between you, Ella, and Gavin this evening. But why did you disrupt the lighting system? Don't ask him to explain that. Bart has hunches, and usually they pay off. At least this one did. Let's stop beating around the bush. Who do you think murdered Dixie, Bart? It isn't a case of thinking. It's a case of knowing this time. You all had strong motives. But since it was Ella... Who... I didn't do it. I didn't. If you say I did, you're crazy. Take it easy, Ella. Quit acting. I was going to say, Ella, that since it was you who discovered the body and reported the murder, your innocence is fairly well established. Oh. Oh, then you don't Even think... Even as it. good an actress as you wouldn't have dared run such, such a risk. You would have uh, taken time to compose yourself and uh, study your lines. So that reduces the group of suspects to Kirk and me. <laughs> Bart, don't let anyone ever tell you you're not a good showman. No one ever has, Bob. Kirk, I don't admire your principles, but since you were with me from the moment you left Gavin's cabin, until your, after your argument with him and Ella, until Ella reported her discovery, you couldn't have been guilty of murdering Dixie. So, I'm it, huh? You're it, Gav. You want the proof? No, I don't want the proof, wise guy. You won't do anything. Yeah. There we are. Keep your hands off it. Hey! Yeah, hey! It's a gun buster, and it's sticking right into your ribs. Okay. Okay. You don't have to get tough. I quit. It's better. Nice work, Inspector. Thanks. Sorry, Gavin. Murderers always get caught, don't they? <laughs>
coffee, Bart? Hmm? Oh, no, thanks, Kirk. Uh, Inspector? Yeah, give me a shot. I need mm -hmm. something to keep me awake. Are you bored, <laughs> Inspector? Yeah, I'm getting sick of sitting around waiting for you to make up your mind to tell us how you knew Gavin Crisp was the boy. <laughs> My <laughs> Inspector, I'm very sorry. I had no idea that that's what you were waiting for. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> no. How about letting us in on it, Bart? Of course. Inspector, when we questioned Gavin in the stateroom, he told us he'd gone to bed at 11.15 as drunk as a lord. Is that right? Sure he did. So what? He said he dropped off to sleep immediately and knew nothing more until we knocked at his door, correct? Okay, okay. Get to the point. That point, Inspector, was on the candle. Huh? Gavin knocked it over in the darkness and it became bent. You remarked on it yourself. Sure I did, but I don't The fact see... that the candle point bent instead of broke when it fell over, Inspector, indicated that the tallow was warm. It was warm when I picked it up. And the only way the tallow could be warm was because the candle was burning before we knocked at Gavin's door. By gosh, that's right, isn't it? By gosh, it is, Inspector. And that meant that Gavin was lying, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Well, that clears up the last of the mysteries. All I can say is it's a lucky thing you were invited on this cruise, Bart. No telling how things might have turned out. Why, Inspector? Why? Why, because... Oh, you mean because mystery is my hobby. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, I did like that uh, we did get the uh, confirmation that the mystery is my hobby radio show does exist in the same uh, universe where the mysteries take place, which is, it's not totally unique, but uh, I think the only ones that have that arrangement are Ellery Queen and the uh, Bob Bailey and... Onward, I guess, whole Jack Johnstone era of Johnny Dollar. Of course, having a mystery writer star in a, uh, star in a mystery series, uh, that does call to mind Ellery Queen, and also it reminded me a little bit of uh, they did something in the Ellery Queen TV show where John Hillerman, uh, before he was on Magnum P.I., he played Simon Brenner, who was this criminologist who had a, a crime-solving series on radio and kept trying to horn in on uh, whatever case Ellery Queen was investigating. I definitely appreciate how he resented getting called uh, to the boat, or the perception he was called in, uh, because a murder was expected. Because, you know, you're like, I thought they actually liked me. And I guess if you've got a reputation for solving murders, it's, it's like, you know, if you're a doctor or some other profession that, you know, people just think they can uh, press you uh, into their service and do it in a sneaky way. So, yeah, I can understand why there was maybe a little hesitancy to get started as well. But he's also operating in an interesting way where he does need uh, Inspector Danton uh, in order to be able to investigate. All right, listener comments and feedback now. Machiavellian Mystique on YouTube writes, Mystery is my hobby, uh, best uh, B-grade show on uh, radio. And I think that is, uh, or in uh, old-time radio, I think that's pretty fair. Uh, because when you listen to this program, you don't tend to hear, uh, you know, like even the fairly successful or well-known actors that you'll hear on other shows, even by in Stand By for Crime, you know, you got a few uh, appearances from some of the notable actors, like Howard McNear. Here, you're dealing with lesser-known actors, and it's really does seem to work quite well. Uh, there, the plots are pretty tight, the acting's uh, fairly good, and there are less goose or other issues to comment on than, say, with something like Boston Blackie. So this is a series that just knows how to do it right, even if it doesn't have, you know, the most notable cast uh, you will hear on old-time radio. Over at the Apple Podcast Store, uh, Jenny writes in, I've been listening to this podcast for years. Mr. Graham brings dedication and consistency to this program, and his background commentary adds valuable contacts 
context that enhances enjoyment of the shows featured. I highly recommend. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that, Jenny. And I also want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Darius, a Patreon supporter since May, currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. Well, join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And then uh, next Thursday, another episode of Mystery is My Hobby. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter, Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.